uh, musical battle of the sound chips, and I'm going to show, demonstrate how I use uh, 8 and 16 bit computers, uh, uh, one, one computer and a uh, couple game consoles as consoles as synthesizers, and I'll be having the SID chip in the Commodore 64 versus the Rico 2A03 and the Nintendo NES and then versus the Yamaha 2612 that's in the Sega Genesis. Mm. But first, just as a little icebreaker, if anybody wants to win a Starbucks card Ooh. and they want to name that chip, I'm going to play a couple notes. I need two people so they want to <laughs> compete and let me know if I see a raise of hands. Anybody want to compete for a Starbucks card by naming the chip? I'm going to play a moment. Anyone? Okay, we got Robert. I'll go ahead and keep the competition going. Okay. And, okay. And uh, how many notes do you need to identify this chip? Oh. How many notes? How many notes? Probably Five? 16, <laughs> 16 notes? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you want five notes? Five I'm going to go with five. Here we go. Whoa. So you've got the Sega, the uh, Nintendo, and the uh, SID chip, and the 64. Here we go. Oh. Five notes. Five notes. Competing, both of you guys. Okay. Sound it, sound it. There you go. Whoa. <laughs> you want to hear it again? Uh, yes, please. Okay. Oh, I know what that is. Oh. What? That's the second. Okay, Robert. I'm, I'm Richard. You won. <laughs> right. Even though he wasn't competing. Uh, you, all right. Yay. All right. We have another Starbucks so card. <laughs> And uh, who else wants oh. to play? What actually anybody that guesses first? How's that? Okay, very good. How's that work? Uh, cheating, man. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. How many notes you gonna How many okay, I'm gonna play five notes. I'll just guess. Here we go. Okay. Nintendo. Anybody? Nintendo. Wrong. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, one more guess. You've got Nintendo. Well, as out now, you got Sega and and uh, the SID chip and the 64. SID. <laughs> they should have. But well, you said it louder than me. <laughs> I said it louder than you. Okay, you one more chance, people. Okay. Here we go. All right. One more chance. I, all right, iced tea. Here we go. <laughs> oh. I want you to sit on that. Nope. Oh. Nope. Oh. Oh. Uh, you got Nintendo and Sega. Nintendo? What? <laughs> there you go. Okay. What? <laughs> okay. Let me All right. just. Robert. Yay. Let's hear it for Robert. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Okay, nice. let's just get over a few basic uh, synth definitions. I know you guys are all hip to all the technology on these machines, yeah. but um, basically, an oscillator in the uh, chip produces a waveform. And there's a the four basics are sine, square, triangle, and sawtooth. What I've been playing is a, uh, a square <laughs> wave <laughs> on the. Um, on the Commodore, and it's it's got a, uh, a kind of a round, smooth sound. If we go down to uh, the triangle, you'll see uh, it's much more mellow. Oh uh, yes. And we'll go down to the uh, sawtooth, more jagged, and they kind of mirror. This is what they would look like on an oscilloscope. So mm. the sawtooth is more jagged. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. Move on. Uh, just, I want to talk for a moment about filters, and I'm going to demonstrate again on uh, on the uh, Commodore. So, four basic filters and in, in the, four four basic uh, parameters in an envelope filter that all of these machines have is the attack, which means the first one is the attack, which is how long it takes for the tone.
to appear when you when I press a key, and if I uh, if I if I change it here on the on the uh, Commodore, uh, you can see it comes in it comes in uh, slower uh, here on the graph when I press hmm. the key, and if I make it more extreme, it takes a long time to come in. So hmm. if I do it just kind of medium. Comes like almost like an accordion type sound. Okay, the other uh, one I want to demonstrate is the release, and that is going to be how how long the tone stays after I lift my finger up from the key. This is immediate. Now you have a little more here on the angle, and then uh, here's a lot longer where it just keeps playing after I hit that. Okay, just two more definitions here. Um, the MIDI interface, which is the uh, connection between a musical instrument and a device that plays. It's called MIDI. It was invented and it came about in 1984. It was agreed upon. And that's how these things are connected. Uh, and uh, this is your basic MIDI cable that's connecting and uh, these to the uh, old devices. And I'll explain 19,200 baud, isn't it? Pardon me? Isn't it 19,200 baud? Yes. Richard, you are the expert on that, and it probably is, yes. It's and it's actually an old problem. technology. It's old. Uh, they, there's a new version out, but still, since all these machines, all the, all the stuff they still make today is from the old uh, MIDI, that's what they keep using. And the other thing I wanted, to, uh, uh, wanted you to know about is the digital audio workstation, or the DAW, came out in 1989. And uh, that's basically like a word processor or a video editor hmm. uh, and uh, for editing recording and editing, adding filters, uh, uh, and, and actually digital instruments um, uh, on, on your computer. So uh, that's, this is a representation of the one that's on a Mac, which is GarageBand. So it basically, quickly, this is your timeline. Commodore comes out in 82. Uh, the MIDI is in, is, comes, up, comes about and is agreed upon on 83. Uh, you can see the Nintendo's at 84 in America, and 1989, the Sega Genesis and the DAW <coughs> became, uh, started coming out of computers. So you can see where the MIDI and the DAW are on the timeline of these, uh, these three devices. So, uh, yeah. What is DAW? Digital Audio Workstation. Hmm. Okay. So that is uh, what you re you're recording on. Oh, okay. So just like a video editor, you're recording the audio. These are your audio tracks here. This is a, uh, a MIDI tracks, which are digital and analog waveform uh, up here. Mm. Uh, and you can record them in different tracks and uh, edit them in different ways. OK, so I'm going to first talk about how uh, I use the SID chip. and. Um, and the, um, the elements of a SID chip that make it special. Of course, you guys, most of you, if not all of you, know a lot about the SID chip. So uh, these are the basic uh, things you probably already know. It has three programmable uh, audio oscillators uh, and an eight, eight octave range. It has four different waveforms per oscillator, the ones I just talked about, sawtooth triangle, uh, a pulse square, and a noise. I didn't talk about noise, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, it has one multi-mode filter uh, featuring a low, high pass and a band pass. Now, that means that you can filter out certain frequencies and leave the other ones in there, and it will give you a different type of sound. Oh. I'll demonstrate that as well. And it has, a, that ring, it has three ring modulators that interfere with each other and kind of give you kind of a satellite space sound. So that what makes that, this chip special. And um, this is my basic setup, okay? 
So, uh, I think I missed. These are the devices that I use. Of course, you have the Commodore. Uh, I have the, the uh, MIDI adapter from Daytel, which I think is the only one you can get available now, which goes in the cartridge port. And that's what I can plug this MIDI keyboard into the Commodore and play the music through a keyboard. Uh, and it ha I, I uh, load the synth cart, which is the software, which is a free software developed by Paul Slocum. Um, I load that uh, from an SD card on the S SD2 IEC through the tape port. And then also because the synth cart, uh, you can use the paddles, the Commodore paddles on. I use the, I have the paddles hooked up uh, on there. And then this is how it's basically hooked up here. Uh, you can see the uh, MIDI keyboard goes out into the Daytel in, and then the synth carts are loaded on there. Uh, I'm taking the AV out. Uh, the synth cart has a video display like you guys are all seeing, and it also has a uh, menu that comes up. It gives you all the key codes that you need so you don't have to consult anything else. And then the audio goes through a device, which is right here, the digital audio uh, uh, interface, which uh, has a USB out, which goes into the computer so you can record on your digital audio workstation. Uh, and uh, this keyboard's powered through the USB, so I'm showing that there. And the synth cart also comes with really good instructions that you can download. This is basically it not only shows you the key codes or the key commands to access uh, different uh, presets, but also you could also alter some of the presets and it's all explained there. Um, and here are all the key commands. So I'm just going to go over a few of them right now. Uh, this is your video display, and if you look at the top there, it's showing you a sawtooth bass, which is what I have. And uh, it has arpeggios, different types of them, and also it has these filter stacks. So if I, if I go back here to the filter bass, for example, uh, I showed you before how, how I can use the synth card key commands to uh, adjust uh, the release. But I can also use one of the, and by the way, if you look up here, you can see the release uh, on the, uh, right above the visual display. It now, now says uh, five, and if I go, it says, uh, it says zero, five, and then eight for long. So it also shows you that. But also I can adjust the cutoff uh, with the uh, uh, with the paddle one, which which on this on this uh, filter base. Kind of gives you that uh, kind of a, a duck sound. But if we go to some other one, like here's the pulsar. It'll, it'll actually add add some of the filter in there. Oh, I wanted to show you something else about it. Any any preset, like let's say the sawtooth bass here, if I if I press um, the um, uh, the cursor key, it'll turn it into fifths, and you can see where it says mode at the top left. Yeah, so it gives you more of that kind of 8-bit sound. Okay, uh, so that's basically how I use it. And then, of course, I'm feeding into the uh, digital workstation on this Mac here, and I can record it and change things. Any questions about any of this before I move on to the next one? Uh, Gerald, on the MIDI keyboard you are using, does it? can any MIDI keyboard hook into yes. the, any the, the You can use any MIDI keyboard. Uh, my advice is, especially when we get into the next two consoles, is that you really understand how your MIDI keyboard works as far as the controls go. Because that's how you can then get into the chip a little bit more that's in them. But for, for the Commodore setup, any MIDI keyboard, you can plug it in there. And you don't need that MIDI keyboard uh, for the synth cart. 
because you can just put the overlay on, or you can just press these keys up here. And then you can control the octaves here. So I get full, much more full, more octaves on this keyboard, which means I don't have to connect it, but you could either press these keys or get your musical overlay on there, and you can just control it all from here, so you don't even have to do MIDI. MIDI um, what particular uh, brand or model of MIDI keyboard are you using right now? This is a Novation. It's an older keyboard. Uh, if I was getting one today, I wouldn't get this one, but uh, Novation makes all new stuff now, really good synthesizers and keyboards uh, and uh, MIDI keyboards, MIDI controllers, they call them. Uh, so uh, there's a, several brands and they're dirt cheap. Does the synth card handle the velocity commands from a velocity sensitive keyboard? Uh, yes, and that is where, yes, and this one has that and that's where you no need to know how your <coughs> keyboard uh, uh, works that you can control the velocity. Yes, and it will respond to that. Yes. Wow. So uh, it plays the notes softer if you hit them softer. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. But that's going to yes, you're going to be able to control that through the wow. through the MIDI keyboard. So you said that you wouldn't get this keyboard if you were getting one nowadays. Well, yeah. which I one? Would, which I, one I, would you get nowadays? Well, if, if I got one nowadays, I might get one with a se uh, sequencer on it. Hmm. So, and, and a, uh, a, a, may, maybe a, a, a different type of, this has its own synthesizer on it. So if I was gonna get, which I don't use, because it's much more of a digital synthesizer, it's not my favorite thing. So I would get one with a synthesizer that I really like. I might get one that's a little smaller, be more portable. You know, I don't know, but they, they make stuff today that is, uh, this is probably 10 years old. They make stuff that is phenomenal. Have so. you listened to different versions of the SID chip, or like the 6581 versus the 8580? Yeah, well, that's a that, yes, I have. Uh, this, I wanted, this is my third. Okay, I, this uh, this C64 I got from Robert. I bought I bought one from him. Uh, the first SID chip blue. Okay. Uh, and uh, Robert was gracious enough to replace it with a machine that had a good SID chip in it. And then uh, the on-off switch uh, shorted, and it blew that SID chip out. Ooh. Okay, and then Richard sold me an on-off switch, which I put in there. Okay, and the reason the other one blew was because of a Commodore power supply, and I heard the... Uh, Robert saying, don't use that power supply. So uh, I, I now have... Uh, uh, Ray Carlson power supplies over there, so I don't have that problem. But um, this power supply blew. I mean, not this power supply. This SID chip blew because of the switch. So uh, I had to get. I had to buy one on eBay. But I bought one on eBay, and I lucked out. I got one that worked. Okay, but after a while, I realized the filters were, were not responding well. They really were distorted, and it was kind of really spoiling the experience for me. So this. Uh, now I I got a replacement, a, fa a fake SID. I have the back SID in this one, mm. and the back SID you can program to be either SID choices, and it gives you full use of uh, of, of the paddles, which the other mm -hmm. SID replacements don't let you do. Oh, so, I didn't know that right. they had one that did the <coughs> potentiometer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so freeze. this one, the back SID, back uh, SID, and you can go in there. And, and control things on the, uh, the, the uh, you can control settings on it. And right. so there's a little program that comes with it. So, mm. uh, and you can change the filters on it and, and also the right. type of SID chip that you want. Yeah. So it will give you that, you know, it sounds good. It sounds mm -hmm. good, but when I put my old SID chip that has the bad filters in it, that sounds better. Mm. Uh, yeah. But. It's a spoil, it's, it spoils the experience because I can't use the filters and I can't even use this because the cutoff screws it all up. So I, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm using now. You can't get SID chips, so it's, it's almost impossible. That's kind of why I asked you where there's anything in those machines. But anyway, any other questions before we move on to the Nintendo? Mm -hmm. Is the Nintendo working? Okay, Nintendo's working. Okay, 
Uh, okay, what's uh, the, the Nintendo came out in '85 in America. Uh, the Rico chip, these uh, elements of the Rico chip are that it's monophonic, meaning you can only p play uh, one note at a time. Oh, okay. Uh, it's an 8-bit synthesizer like the <coughs> Commodore, and, and for you uh, Commodore people, uh, it's sourced from an M MOS technology chip core, which doesn't mean that MOS, it's not an MOS chip, but they sourced uh, the core from it. Uh, so uh, I thought that was interesting. It has five channels, uh, two adjustable pulse square waves, a triangle wave, we already discussed that, a noise generator, and it also has a fifth channel that creates a built-in drum and percussions. Uh, the output of all five channels are mixed before, before it comes out of the Nintendo, so it's monophonic. Hmm. Okay. Like the Commodore. Yes, like the Commodore. Okay. How do I access uh, the Nintendo machine, which is uh, <coughs> the, the, the chip? It's uh, I, I have this device from Japan called the Fama Ma Midi. Okay, <laughs> it's it's a game cartridge. Yeah. It has a software in there, and it's also a MIDI adapter. Mm. And so it's hooked up right here, uh, and um, it's it can go right. This can go right into that. Okay, mm. uh, and this is the setup. Okay, you've got the you've got the uh, Fama Ma Midi into the Nintendo. Once again, there's no video output here, so actually we're going to turn this off for now because uh, we don't we don't need that anymore. Um, no video, analog out into this device, uh, and uh, the uh, the uh, MIDI keyboard goes in through uh, the adapter. Okay, and how can you control this device? Good question that wasn't asked, but uh, Richard's probably <laughs> ready to ask it. Okay, one way to do it is through a uh, Nintendo controller. Uh, I didn't want to demonstrate this today because there's too much to do, but this is your instructions on how to do it, and you can go through go through the five channels and uh, the different presets and adjust some of the presets right here. Okay, uh, the other way to do it is through your uh, your MIDI keyboard uh, and uh, we can, I, I can, uh, depending on the buttons that I press here and <clears throat> you go to different programs or something, like different voices here? Yeah. And no, what, what, what I'm doing is I'm being able to now send out through here into the Famama MIDI yep. that's now going into the, the uh, Rico chip, and I'm able to access these five channels. Mm -hmm. So I got channel one on now, and uh, I'm not hearing anything. So, uh, well, you know why? Because I turned the TV off. It's really stupid. I don't usually have the sound coming. I don't usually have the sound coming out of the TV. So, uh, I can, I can just. Don't need that. I can turn this off, and I can still hear the sound. Okay. Oh, very good. Wow. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, this is channel one, uh, and this is channel two, which is another type of square wave, and then your triangle wave, which you can hear is a lot more mellower, and then we have the fourth one is noise. So the thing about this channel, which is really crazy, is that up here it gets kind of this machine sound. So, you know, depending on uh, your 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 musical bent, for example, you could you could create music out of that. So, I mean, I, I use this I, I use this to record stuff because I think it sounds cool. And it's also backwards. Instead of going up the scale, when you go up the scale, it comes down. Hmm. Huh. So anyway, it's kind of interesting. But it's right up here, and all the rest of it's your, your noise. OK, so the other thing now, if I go to the fifth channel, turn it here. And actually, it says here, keyboard MIDI channel. So that's what I'm looking at when I look down here. 
Now, if I play the B key, I, 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 and I, I get, depending on what key I, I play, I get, I get the, the sound that's demonstrated here. I think we're flipping down here. I'll just go up it. Somewhere in the wrong. No. Anyway, I think if you change your octaves, if I change my octaves on the keyboard, I can move it up and down and get it to a place where I can, I can uh, use it better. So. It gives you all of these uh, different uh, drum, drum and percussion effects. The third way to access it is through the presets. And there's 87 presets. Um, if I dial in. <laughs> okay, I want to demonstrate some of these for you guys, uh, but basically the one through four is going to be your basic synth waves. Uh, we got a slow attack here, so as I demonstrated before, if I press it, it's not going to come on right away. Um, and uh, I'm just going to go up, the, up here, let's see, if I go to 12, we get it, we get a decay, 13 to 15. 16 to 18, you get an echo effect, um, and in the 30s, let's say, well now I'm in the mid 30s, you get a pulse, it really changes. If I get into the 50s and up into the 60s, you get kind of game sounds. and then from 72 up to 80, you get a vibrato. <laughs> and then you get some kind of crazy sounds at the top there. Okay, so that's the three ways you can access or I can access to the thumb on my midi. Uh, and uh, like I say, it's only one note at a time, so you can't play chords and you basically want to overdub to make the music. Or you can have a backtrack, let's say, and you're going to play it at the time. Any questions about any of this? So I just looked up this back SID, and it said, unfortunately, due to yeah. the chip shortage, this item is unavailable, unavailable until further notice. Almost everything that I'm showing you is unavailable to yeah. further notice. It's only 30 bucks. That's I, awesome. Yeah, 30 bucks, a great price. I believe FPGA SID is still available. However, it's really expensive for FPGA SID. FPGA SID. Yeah. It's like ninety to one hundred twenty dollars. Yeah, and what's what's the young woman's name who makes these? Uh, that, that would be. Oh, I, I just forgot the name. Um, but she makes them herself. Is right. She, like you or, I ordered it, and like three weeks later, it came off her a little uh -huh. something line. It's really kind of cool. But oh. that's too bad. She's got other stuff Evie. that she sells. Yeah, Evie. Evie. Evie Solomon. Yeah, that's it. Okay. All right. She makes the back So seat. each of those yeah. Nintendo channels has. A different characteristics of sound basically yeah each okay each the, the five channels have the, well they're the five different oscillators so you have two square one triangle uh, you have the noise channel and then you have the drum and percussion effects but then the presets the presets here that I showed these are on the cartridge oh I from, see. from the FAMA MIDI it's it's now it's creating uh, it's it's create using the 
I shouldn't say, the presets are not, actually the sounds are not on the cartridge, but it's setting up the filters and the chip to make that sound. So that's, that's, the, that's their contribution. And the way that the video uh, music, video game music composers in the day that they made these <coughs> games, they were not able to play the, the chip like I'm doing mm -hmm. through a device like this. They would, they would play it on a keyboard, let's say a piano or some other instrument, they'd write it down in musical notes, and then they or somebody else would translate that into, a, into the program language, that then they'd run it on the, uh, uh, from my understanding, I should say, that's my understanding, they would run that on the game, on the, on the chip, until they got, and they'd tweak it until they got the way it's supposed to sound. Hmm. So they would have to translate from their keyboard into what it was supposed to sound like. Okay, we're going to end up here with the Yamaha and, um, okay, it's working. All right, so what's special about the Yamaha? Uh, it's um, special about the Yamaha, it's got six channels, so I can actually play. That's okay. It has uh, six Frequency modulation and ampli amplitude modulation channels. It's got one di DAC or digitized audio channel that uh, replaces channel six, and it gives you the drum percussion effects, which I'll demonstrate, much like the, the Rico. And going back to the SID, the SID doesn't have those, and so you don't, you can't, you know, you have to create your own sounds on the SID. Um, <coughs> the thing that's special about the Yamaha chip is that it's got four operators per each channel. And an operator is a group of an, oscill uh, an oscillator, uh, a pitch envelope, and a, 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 an amplitude at, uh, envelope, and an amplifier. And then you can group them also in a different order, and that affects the sound quality. So you have a, you have a lot more ability to create a sound because of the characteristics of the Yamaha chip. And it's, it's got stereo sound and it's programmable, so you can go right, left, middle, whatever. So it's also the other two don't, are not stereo. So how do I control that? Okay, so I purchased a device called the Gen MDM, and it's a, it's a game cartridge that has a software on it. So it goes into the Sega, well there it is, you can see it over there. And, um, and it, then it has a circuit board that goes in controller, a game a controller port two, and this has a USB port and a MIDI connector. So it's, a, it's going a mini MIDI into the regular uh, MIDI size here. And then this USB goes into the, your computer. That's what makes this also special. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain that in a second more. But here's your basic setup. So once again, no video. Uh, Audio out, analog into the digit into the digital interface, um, and you got your MIDI keyboard going in through the adapter there. But you also have the USB uh, going out of the computer, which means that I can use the um, I can use a editing a digital editor on the computer to uh, access all these parameters on the Yamaha chip. And this was created by a user. This, this uh, Sega Genesis kind of community is all uh, people who use it. And they've created these things, which is kind of cool. Um, so you can select from thousands of user-generated patches, uh, which are TFI files. They're derived from games. Um, you can select and, and uh, alter the AM, FM levels and the speed. Um, you can adjust the four operators like I talked about. Uh, select monophonic uh, or polyphonic. Right now it's, po it's, it's polyphonic. I'm sure it's not, but uh, that's, right now it's only monophonic. See if we can change that. And you can adjust the uh, drum percussions and you can change the order. So uh, I will put this up. Here we are. I'm going to demonstrate it. This is going to uh, I'll demonstrate it live. How it's going to affect it. Now I should be able to turn on the polyphonic uh, mode. But 
it's not working, so let's see what we can do. Here I'm going to load, these are some of the few patches that I have on this computer hmm. to go in there, but I'm going to put the uh, piano patch back in and see if I can get the polyphonic mode to work. It would be nice if it worked. <laughs> Let's, let's dispense with that for a moment. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate the LFO, so I'm going to turn it on here, and I'm going to increase the level here from zero up. And I can adjust the speed here. Okay, so I can also then uh, use the amplitude modulation LFO. So if I'm going to turn that up, and now here are your four operators. And these are your uh, dials that you can uh, uh, adjust the different parameters of each oscillator. So I'm going to turn on the amplitude uh, modulator here. And unlike the frequency modulator that, that uh, uh, varies the pitch, this one is varying the, uh, uh, the uh, volume uh, in a pulse. So it gives you more of a tremolo. And depending on which operator you turn on, it's going to have a different characteristic. And depending on which you what you adjust here, you will also, you can dip change the sound uh, on these. So for example, I can adjust the release, but, uh, but I can also adjust the overall sound by the volume of the operator. I wanted to briefly show you, these are some of the patches that I've collected in a folder on my computer. Some of the ones that I, I like, uh, and I've labeled them in my own special way. Uh, but for example, so here's a horn. Now, I could adjust these and resave it as my own. So for example, maybe I would like that better. Maybe I wanted a more muffled sound. So then I could I can actually resave that over here. I can export it and resave it as any call it anything I want and I had my own preset. The other thing I wanted to show you here was that uh, when I talked about changing the four operators in which they influence each other, I can do that here and you can hear the sound. So that could also be set, uh, saved as your preset. Briefly, I will go into the DAC. Okay, there's a lot more things on here that you can adjust, and I'm not going to get into them right now. But if you're interested, you can come by afterwards, and I can show you more about it. Um, but I wanted to show you uh, how I can access the uh, channel six. And I'll try to do that. Okay, so channel six has the uh, noise, but it also has also has, in a very limited uh, portion of your keyboard, your drum percussion effects. And also, like the Rico, I should point out that you can't play this channel with the other stuff I showed you. You've got to dial it separate. So you have to lay down your percussion drum 
uh, track and then go back and if you wanted to just do, let's say, all, all Sega, uh, record an all Sega thing with a drum track. And same thing with the Rico, you'd have to put your drum percussion down and then uh, go back and record uh, your oscillator sounds, the uh, musical waveforms. Okay, any questions before I wrap this up? So what is the exact number of the Yamaha chip that's in the Sega? The exact number is... This is the YM2 2612. 2612. Because I have the, a cartridge for the Coco that uses a YM2149. Well, there's, it's, it's, there's a lot of them are very similar. They're similar. And like you pointed out, I believe earlier today, different versions of the Sega Genesis have a different have version different of the chips. Yamaha chip. And this yep. is the first one. There's also another chip in there from Texas Instruments uh -huh. uh, that uh, this system is not uh, tying into that is also part of the uh, Sega Genesis uh, sound system. So it had two different sound chips. Yeah, they have two. Texas Instrument. Is that and the 64 it has, 89 or 74 689 or something like that? Yeah, and it has something to do with creating some of the drum percussions, not the, not from this chip, but it, so so when when uh, the game composers uh, they would use both of those chips. Wow. And so when you play games on the Sega Genesis, it's using both of those chips. That's, and it has a separate processor, just for sale. Yeah. Right, the Z80. Right. And, and as uh, Richard and I were talking about, uh, on this early version of the Sega Genesis, the stereo sound comes out of the uh, uh, headphone jack, not out of the AB port. Uh, but the later versions, um, stereo will come out the back. And so if you really were into the stereo sound and wanted to adjust it, you could do that. And by the way, you can adjust the stereo sound on that, that uh, user-generated uh, uh, digital editor. So, uh, but uh, people that have this version and they're into the stereo sound, uh, especially for playing s games that are in stereo, right? They'll, they'll, they'll take their uh, audio output and hook them up to a great system like Richard has over there and they, you can have the stereo sound. You come out of the headphone jack and then you have your volume control there. Any, any more questions about this setup? Wasn't there an FM synthesizer from England that you could hook into the Commodore and it used a, well, did it use a little Yamaha chip inside of it? I can't remember you know, the exactly. The card for the PC, like before, you know, pure digital wavetable synthesizer, they used this FM mm -hmm. generation technology that was part of this ad lib card. That was an early PC musical mm -hmm. ISA card. I wonder if they had something using a similar chip for the card. I thought there was, and I thought there cool. was. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd have to look up the English English sources to find that find out more about it. Uh, I'd have to look on the internet. Wow, don't know that. You have to mm. check it out. Okay. So there's another interesting thing. The, the guy, the chip designer who designed that SID chip, went on later to found the synthesizer company in Sonic. Which one? In Sonic. Oh, yeah, 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 yep. yeah, yeah. Same guy that founded that company designed the SID. Right. And then Yamaha, which was making synthesizers after this machine came out, I mean, they, they used the, they create, their synthesizers had that FM sound. Mm -hmm. They were known for that. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here with basically the pros and cons of each of these systems. Uh, on the synth card, uh, with the, uh, on the on the Commodore using the synth card system, uh, the synth card is free. It's got a, you can adjust the presets. It's got all those presets. It's polyphonic. Um, it's got the uh, classic 8-bit video sound. Uh, the key command instructions are well laid out. It's got the video display with the menu of key commands, um, and you don't need a MIDI. As I pointed out, you don't need a MIDI keyboard. Uh, you can use the overlay. 
The cons are the SID chips, at least in my experience, is that they're fragile and they're currently nearly impossible to replace because nobody can remake them. Uh, most replacement SIDs don't allow paddle or mouse control. Meanwhile, the one I got to replace it that doesn't allow it, Richard just discovers that it, it's, you can't get it anymore, right now, I guess. Uh, the sound can be distorted depending on your, the shape of your, your C64 and your SID. So for example, I think some of my capacitors are going in this, oh. in this guy, so I think it, it may need, I, I may need to do some work on it. Um, you have to create your own sound, drum effects and Commodores can be expensive and are often sold without SIDs. If you go on eBay, for example, none of you guys probably need to do that. You can win one here. Uh, or get one from one of the people in the club, but they're, they're not going to come with a SID. It's really going to be really rare. They're going to be really expensive. Okay, the Nintendo using the Famama MIDI system, you get your classic 8-bit sound. Uh, there's 87 easily dialed in presets uh, for sound effects. You can access the Channel 5 uh, uh, drum effects, and it's a relatively clean sound. Uh, on the con side, it's monophonic, one note at a time. Uh, there's no video or computer menu. You can't adjust the presets. There's limited instructions and no online help. Mm. Uh, and it's expensive. Uh, I got this on eBay, but if you bought it, if you bought it from Japan, it's 200 bucks. Ooh, ooh. So wow. I wouldn't advise it. Um, <laughs> a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money. Oh. Exactly. Oh, wow. Um, and also, you have to get a working, you have to get a, a Nintendo machine too, which some of us have and some of us don't. For example, I got this hand-me-down Nintendo machine and uh, and I had read about this thing I found one that was slightly cheaper on, uh, on on eBay so I got it and I was already using this and I started using that it was cool after three weeks this Nintendo just powered down and that was it it was Ooh. gone so it took me three weeks to get it going again uh, I recapped the power supply oh. which is what, what everyone said would work and uh, it, it, it that didn't work I had to trace with help uh, the, where the current was 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 stopped, and I found it was the bridge rectifier, which I replaced. It cost a buck, and uh, actually the guy who sold me the cap kit, he just gave me one. Put it in, it worked perfect. But it's the one thing that I read everywhere online: a bridge rectifier never. Ha that's not going to be the problem. It's not going to be the problem. <laughs> of course, that was the problem. But anyway, uh, so I got that going. Um, as far as the Sega Genesis go, it's polyphonic, even though I didn't get a chance to uh, uh, demonstrate that very well today. Uh, it has the software editor with incredible adjustments, thousands, thousands of, uh, of uh, presets. Uh, you got the AM, FM, and the filters access to channel six, and it's easy to save presets. Um, the sound can be distorted, uh, depending on how you would make all those adjustments. Uh, the polyphonic mode can be finicky, which I just demonstrated to you because I couldn't get it going. I want to sit there in front of everybody and try to get it going. The editor is sometimes unresponsive, but it's pretty good. Uh, there's little online help. There's, it's like limited. In other words, you find when this thing came out a couple years ago, people wrote about it on forums and on, there's some YouTube videos and then stops. I don't cool. know what, what happened. Nobody's, yeah. doing it. Nobody's been using it. The gem NDS uh, hardware is often out of stock. I don't think you can get it anymore. It's 80 bucks, and you have to get the price of the, of the Sega Genesis. And so, also, I had to buy this because I didn't have a Sega Genesis when I decided to do this uh, project. And so that one I got uh, with the whole the whole kit and everything was about 70 bucks. I got a good deal. Uh, uh, Steve Hertz, who's not here today, advised me to get this version because it has the best sound chip in it. Uh, and it's the one that says high definition on it. In other words, you can't just get the 16-bit Sega Genesis from 1990 or late 1989. You have to get the very first one that has the high definition printed on it. So uh, anyway, I got two bait and switches uh, on eBay. I just sent back and then uh, finally I got this one. And uh, it's worked pretty good except the power supply that came with it, which is not a Sega, it was a, one of these cheaper, cheap ones uh, that came with it. It died. I had to open it up, you can see the band-aid on it, and found the cheap capacitor inside it had blown, and I replaced it, and it works fine. Anyway, uh, I wanted to show, I wanted to go back 
to one thing here, just because I didn't get to show you this. When I talked about um, the TFI files that people have created, I wanted to show you that people have gone into Sega Genesis games and, and uh, taken bits of the music out and turned them into this TFI file. So there's literally, if you look up, these are all, this is only one bank of games here, as you can see, and all the files are in each one of them. So you can, t you can load any of those files in, tweak them, save them as your own, but literally thousands of different sound files, presets that you can create, hmm. wow. which makes it uh, an arduous uh, task, but also kind of fun if you can spend your life with that. All right, that's it. Thank you for listening. Any other questions? So do you know what the current like going rate for a 6581 SID is on eBay? How much people are asking? Oh, fi uh, when the last time I looked, I would say the cheapest would be 50 to 80 bucks. Ooh, and yeah. they're all from like Hungary <laughs> or uh, Russia or someplace. Uh, Russia. And, uh, they're it, they're from fakes what? or <laughs> like factory rejects. I think Moss, you know, they test them. And the ones that, you know, a filter wasn't working or a channel or oscillator wasn't working, they would, you know, trash them or whatever. And somebody in Hungary collected <laughs> all those and now they're pretty <laughs> selling them. For but also months. there's counterfeits yeah. where they have printed uh, 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 the whole thing with Korea on the one side and MOS on the top. They've, they've, they're just counterfeit chips and they're selling those things. And so you don't know what you're going to get. So I don't, yeah. I, I wouldn't trust it. I mean, I just got that one and it took me uh, you know uh, months to figure out that the thing wasn't working right and I'm sure wow. that's one of them I think one it's probably a chip like you talked about that was a reject yeah but like I said it sounds sounds the basic sound is cool man it's fuller uh, deeper sounding but can you play this thing's something? pretty good what's that can you play something like a song he wants a, he wants a musical presentation uh, I, <laughs> Yes, I, oh. I can. Here, hold on. Let me, let me, go, let me load up uh, uh, something that actually works and uh, that's not uh, uh, let's see. too noisy. What, what I... Wait, oh, because I'm on the... Uh, hold on, hold on. Now I have to get off of the channel 6. Because all it gets one note out, uh, but uh, and I turn my my uh, my uh, Commodore off. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you. All right. And thanks for joining in on the Name That Chip contest. Name That Chip. The Commodore Los Angeles Super Show.